Hello, my name is Sabrina. I'm currently a junior at MIT, and today I'll be talking a little bit about college life, especially from the perspective of academics. In general, in college, you have a lot more choices than you did in high school, which means more freedom, but also it's very easy to get overwhelmed or feel lost when you first get to college and see all of the different options. Luckily, there are usually a lot of resources to guide you. For example, you are likely to have an academic advisor. You are likely to have peer mentors, either through your major or through your residential community. You can also reach out to your friends, especially older friends who have similar interests. And you can talk to specific offices for your specific background. For example, MIT has an international student office that talks specifically about issues facing international students when they come to the US. College is a great opportunity to explore, and you can always change your mind, so you should not feel too pressured when you're making any one decision. First, I'll talk about choosing your major. The rules are different for each college, which should be described to you when you're applying to that college. For example, you may apply for a specific major, such as computer science, or a specific school, like the School of Engineering. In that case, you'll be limited to choosing that major that you applied for or that specific school that you applied for. However, in other cases, such as for MIT, you apply for the college in general, and once you get there, you can choose between any of the majors available. You should make sure you know the rules for your specific college so that you can plan out your time there. Additionally, colleges may have different rules for declaring your major. For example, MIT doesn't require students to declare a major until the end of freshman year, and you can change your major up until senior year, while other schools may require that you set your major earlier on. Again, it's important to know these rules in advance so that you can successfully plan out your time. You should plan ahead even if your college offers a more flexible plan, because even if it's theoretically possible to switch to another major, it may be very difficult if you don't have the classes planned out to appropriately satisfy the major requirements. Then, to talk a little bit more in detail about choosing classes, I think the most important thing is making sure that you're on track for requirements. Then from there, you also want to make sure you know your strengths and weaknesses so that you can select classes that will work for you. For example, some students prefer classes that are more theoretical, while other students prefer classes that are more hands-on. In addition, some students may prefer classes that have more tests, determining more of the grade, while other students may prefer classes that work primarily off of group projects. You can learn which style works best for you by exploring classes during your freshman and sophomore years, and then use that to make the best choices for your later years in college. However, you also shouldn't get stuck in one style, and you should feel free to explore and challenge yourself because that's what college is for. Lastly, I wanna emphasize that you should keep your load reasonable each semester. A lot of ambitious students get to college and try and take as many classes as they can. However, this can lead to burnout in your later years of college, and then you're not ex enjoying your college experience and you're not getting much out of it. So in order to avoid this, I would recommend looking into class evaluations for previous iterations of the same classes you're thinking of taking for your college. This can tell you how time consuming and how difficult a class might be, which is not always reflected in the number of units for a specific class. And again, you want to reflect on your individual strengths and weaknesses, since you may take more or less than the average number of hours for a specific class, depending on your background and your strengths. Then, once you're taking those classes yourself, one of the most important things to do is to learn to manage your own time. Unlike high school, the majority of work you do for your college classes will be done outside of class, so you need to guide yourself. There may be many long assignments that don't have specific guidelines. For example, there may be a semester long project that you have to make progress on through the semester, but only has a deadline at the end of the semester. You want to make sure you're pacing yourself so you're not trying to cram everything into that last week. Luckily, there are a lot of resources and you're not just on your own. Most classes will have office hours where you can go to speak to TAs or the professor for guidance on the homework or general help on understanding the course material. Additionally, a lot of classes will have tutoring programs, especially if they're larger introductory classes. And you can also work with other students so that you can help each other understand the material better and get through the homework more easily. Lastly, I would recommend reflecting on your study techniques and adjusting as needed each semester to see what's working for you and what isn't working for you. Overall, I want to emphasize that college is a really great time to explore. You do have to be more self-directed, but that also means that you can shape your four years to have the experience that you want. 
you should seek out guidance from faculty and other students, but you should also trust yourself because you know yourself best and what works best for you. That's all for today. Thank you.